Hey, how's it going everyone? My name is Daniel from Velvado. Now before we start this tutorial, I went ahead, you know, I felt a little generous. And what I did was not only did I drop the raw photo for you guys to download, but also the preset for this photo that we're going to be editing. That way you guys can go ahead and save it and use it for other photos and other car shoots you do. Um, and yeah, all right, let's go ahead and let's get right into it. All right, so here in this raw photo, we have this beautiful shot of this Huracan from Dip Auto Works. Um, by the way, it's a beautiful red. You really have to see this in person. So either way, here in our Lightroom, we're gonna press R for the crop shortcut, and we're gonna go to four by five. And the reason for that is because this is going to be a portrait on Instagram. And the cool thing, little marketing perspective wise, the larger the photo is, which is the four by five, it'll take up most of your feed. So when you're swiping through your homepage, you're gonna end up using like two swipes to go over it rather than just a small square photo. I, I'm a nerd. Okay, so four by five, let's go ahead, let's crop this. Let's just eyeball it right here in the middle. And that looks about fine. Now, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure that our two boxes here in the lens corrections are checkmarked. Ask why, don't ask why actually. You'll thank me later. And then now we can play with our tone curve. So let's go ahead, let's bump up our mid tones. Let's go ahead and drop our highlights. Actually, we're gonna increase our highlights a little bit. And then let's go ahead and drop our shadows. Looking, looking pretty good so far, before and after. Decent. Now we're gonna go to our basic panel. We're gonna go ahead and increase contrast by 25. That's actually a little too much. Let's do 10. Let's bring down our highlights to negative 55. Increase our shadows to about 85. That way, obviously the car becomes more visible because in the raw photo here, the rear end is kind of dark. Now I'm gonna hold the option key on my keypad and I'm gonna just scroll between the left and right to see if I have anything overexposed. Obviously, the farther I go to the right, um, it's overexposed, but the farther I go to my left, looks about right. So I'm gonna decrease my whites to about 10. Same thing with the blacks, holding down the option key and just making sure nothing is underexposed. So with the blacks, we're actually keeping negative five because I am going for this dark look. For my clarity, let's bump it up to 35 and my texture up to 15. So with the vibrance and saturation, I usually mess with it, but not in this case. So just to make sure we have the right red because this is very important in car photography. You don't want to take a photo of a green car and make it yellow and then send it to the owner and he's like, well, when did I get a wrap? So press one on your keypad and you can see the before and after right on the same screen. And it looks about right. This red is just obviously more bright. The brightness sensitivity is just brighter, um, but it looks like the same red to me. But with the blue, I do wanna make a nice aqua little tint to it. So this is what I mean. I'm gonna go ahead and make sure I have the car. There we go. And I'm gonna drop on my blue negative 35. Because for me, I think having this type of blue with red goes very well together. So 35. We do have a weird tint on the car. So let's, let's do 50. I usually always bring my aquas to the right because whenever you're taking photos and you get that reflection on the windshield, even if you are using a CPO, sometimes turns like a very weird blue. So I just increase it on my aqua. That way we don't have that weird distillation color. With the reds, definitely wanna go ahead and make that pop out. So let's keep it 35. And then with my orange, let's go ahead and increase it to 15. Yellow, five. And then I might have to increase my greens to 45 just to make the green bushes for sure get that vibrant look to it. So for my aquas, I'm gonna decrease it to about negative 25. And then my blues, just leave it there. It doesn't need to be touched. Increase the luminance of my red to 25. Increase the orange to 10. Yellow, we can probably drop that down to negative 30. Greens, let's increase that to 30. Aqua, blue is fine. And now we get to our mid-tones, highlights, and shadows. So for my highlights, I wanna give it that aqua tint, or that's what I'm going for. So I'm gonna just slowly drag it down here and make sure that we're on a light blue. For my shadows, I'm gonna see if I can get that orange look to it. Right about here. Now what I am gonna do to my highlights is just slightly increase it to about 25. Now we go down to our detail tab. Holding down the option key, I'm gonna make sure that we're masking just the car alone. 
or just about the car alone. Then once I do that, bring up my sharpening to 70, my radius to two, and detail set to 45. Now your noise reduction should not be increased at all if it's taken during the daytime. It only needs to be increased if the sun starts to set or if you're taking night shots, which I'll explain in my further tutorials. Now I'm gonna go ahead and press Y on my keypad to take a look at it and it looks way better. But let's do the before and after actually. Before and mm, yeah, definitely a, a very good edit. Now I'm not really done yet. There's a couple things I can do. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop my radio tool on top of this car. And the reason for that is because I'm gonna increase the texture and clarity is just a slight more, but only to affect the car. And here's how. So drop the radio tool over, make sure that my invert is selected on and my range mask is selected to color. Drop my little eye drop tool, whatever that thing is. And I'm gonna press O to make sure that I'm selecting the car. As you notice, the program highlights the car red. Um, and it should only be the car red. Sometimes you make it the foreground, but it just depends the color of the car, obviously. So now that I have my car selected, I'm gonna press O again to remove that overlay that I just made sure it was on. Then I'm gonna increase my texture to about another 40 and clarity to about 10. Let's make sure that's it on 40. And what I'm doing, like I said, I'm bringing out the curvature, making the details pop on this car. Press enter and there we go. We went from a raw flat tone type of look to a more vibrant increased shadows, having the texture stand out and messing around with the highlights and shadows. Now, if you found this video useful, I'm gonna ask two things from you. One, subscribe to the Velvet Auto channel. And number two, give it a like. Those two small things makes a huge contribution to making the channel of Velve Auto grow bigger. If you're not following us on Instagram, Velve Auto on Instagram, or it's as well in the link down below, check it out, give us a follow. We give out our car photography tips every single day, Monday through Saturdays. Other than that, it's your boy Daniel from Velve Auto, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.